Good day and God bless everyone. This is Queen Lindy Pitacora from North Central Mindanao College taking Bachelor of Secondary Education, major in English, a second year student. In this video, I am going to discuss the first part of this theme one, which is about upholding human dignity. Upholding human dignity is at the center of the value system that we associate with peace. So why does human dignity is associated with peace? As we all know, dignity is an innate right of a person. It is the intrinsic value of a person that need to be valued and respected by other people as well. So, um, human dignity is rooted in the nature of human being as it drives us to seek good, as it, as it also helps us to determine what is um, right from wrong or the wrong from right, which also upholds or promotes the dignity of a human person. Human dignity is defined as the fundamental innate worth of a human being. It is also a principle that is now universally accepted but has not taken root in the actual practices of many governments, communities, and other non-state actors. So, the human aspiration of uh, for dignity and freedom um, belongs to um, every man or women alike. Um, it could be from young or old. So, we are all um, have this um, right or the freedom. So, it, so human dignity is um, a universal. So, it is the right for all. So, human dignity is, um, is a fundamental guiding value for every person who has these rights as a person. So, however, um, there are some cases or circumstances nowadays that there are still uh, violations or uh, violations of the human rights for the other persons. Like there are discriminations and among others. So we have here an example. This is an example of the women during the 19th century in which um, women are regarded as um, weak and fragile they have no right to access education they have no rights to take um, to have a profession they are only intended for household chores so um, they were um, seem to be as um, weak and they have no strength like men can do see this were the some of the um, ideology, uh, the ideology or the beliefs of um, the men during the 19th century. So this is some of just the example of uh, human rights uh, being violated. So another one is the term racism. So a while ago, the pictures that I presented a while ago in the um, previous slide is about the sexism in which they were the discrimination um, of the women before. And now, second picture is a racism in which uh, the person are being discriminated because of their race. So we have here an example, the Asian hate. So uh, this was also relevant to nowadays in which Asian people are gaining this too much hate and hatred um, from other people outside of the Asia continent. So these are just some of the examples of how the human rights are being uh, violated. So we have here, the principle of human dignity is enshrined in the teaching of major faith. So, um, human dignity, so understanding the concept of human dignity, uh, it starts at the church itself. It starts to every religion because religion teaches us on how to uh, behave morally and how to um, 
on how to communicate with the other people appropriately without um, discriminating the other person or without putting down other people. Education that seeks to uphold human dignity is often referred to as human rights education, which is within the umbrella we call peace education. So understanding this concept about upholding human dignity become part in the educational system specifically in the curriculum as it will give us an um, understanding um the importance of uh the importance of the rights of every person about upholding human dignity so we have here the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. So the recognition of the human rights as a significant international concern came at the close of World War II with the, with the founding of United Nations and the adoption of Universal Decl Declaration of Human Rights or known as the UA uh, UDHR by the UN general assembly in 1948 this was according to flowers 1998 so as you can see because of this discrimination of this uh it will make the people or the groups of people um to be divided so it will cause more confusions or possible um could cause war so that is why this concern during uh, the previous centuries the early centuries sees this the importance of human rights to be um, uplifted so there in order to protect um, the people from discrimination in order to um, raise the standard of living so that is why there were these groups uh, groups of people especially the united nations they created this um, declaration of um, human rights for all universally so we have here the first uh the here are the articles that were embedded in the universal declaration of human rights so it consists um with a total of um 30 articles so the first article is um which summarize um the right to equality so everyone has the right to we are all endowed with this um conscience with um, mind that should act towards one another in a spirit of brotherhood so we should treat one another as equal although there are rich and poor people so we should treat uh, each other as an equal person we are all born with um, equal rights and dignity so whether you are rich or poor um, you have this right uh, to equality in the society so the second article uh, article 2 freedom from discrimination so we are all entitled to all rights and freedoms without distinction of any kind such as uh, color race ethnicity status sex age language religion or it could be our political or other opinion so we are all um entitled to not to discriminate with one another because it is our right the third article is the right to life liberty and personal security so these are just some of the basics rights that are enjoyed by all of us right now as we can see we are having this um freedom to live for ourselves and to have this um personal security so the article for freedom from slavery so during the early centuries we were experiencing this um um tragic slavery from other um from other countries because before as we can remember during the um uh, Spanish colonizers, Filipino were uh, were being uh, slaved by the Spaniards. So that was before, but now we uh, because of this Universal Declaration of Human Rights, um, we have this freedom from slavery. 
the Article 5, which is freedom from torture and degrading treatment. So, we are all have this um, rights to free ourselves from this um, degrading treatment, from harassment, from violations, and other punishment. Uh, punishment. So, we are having this right to free ourselves from this um, torture, degrading treatment. And the Article 6, right to recognition as a person before the law. So, we as a person, we um, our rights should be recognized as a person. So, we are, um, despite of the different statuses in life, whether you are poor or rich, you have this equal rights to be recognized as a person before the law. The Article 7, right to equality before the law. So, all of us, everyone are entitled to equal protection against any violation and discrimination. The law should treat the person, uh, each one of a person, either you are um, less fortunate or fortunate, um, either poor or um, rich, you need to be treated equally under the law. So, because the value of a person cannot be measured by the money but because we are talking about here the rights of every person for all of um for all not for the wealth so if the less fortunate um, people have violated uh, violated any law and a need to be punished um the same goes to the rich people so we have an equality for all so all but it all depends to um to the kind of case or crime and the gravity that is um included in the crime so we have the next article which is the article 8 the right to remedy by competent tribunal so everyone has the right to an effective remedy for the competent national tribunals for acts uh, for acts of violating the fundamental rights and granted him by the constitution or by the law and the next one the article 9 freedom from arbitrary arrest and exile so um, no person should be um, arrested so or put into the detention or being in prison or be exiled without enough reason or evidences that the person is guilty and responsible of a crime so the next one is the article 10 right for fair from public hearing so everyone has uh, the right to be heard publicly so in order to know their rights and their obligations and the possible charges or the possible cases the charges against him so we have here the next article the article 11 the right to be considered innocent until proven guilty so everyone as being accused by the other person he has the right to be heard and to be presumed innocent until he is proven to be guilty with the crime and the number 12 freedom from interference with the privacy family home and correspondence so everyone has the right to the, uh, to the protection of the law against uh, against such interferences or any attacks so um, no person is allowed to interfere with your own um, personal or any sensitive information it could be your messages chats emails or personal documents so um no one is allowed to interfere with that because that is your privacy you have this right for your um privacy so no one should um allowed to interfere with that so all of us has the right under the law against this interference so the next one is the article 13 which is right to few movement in and out of a country okay so for example you and your family um wanted to settle in canada so you have the right to live in other places so you have the right to move and in out of the places 
if you were a Filipino and you wanted to go with the other places or shall we say outside of the country you have this right to settle in other places as long as you have not uh, violated um, any of the law so the next article which is the right to asylum in other countries from persecution so everyone has the right um, to ask help um, if a person has been degraded that has no basis in his own country so this right uh, may not be inverted if that has no um, if in the case of prosecutions uh, genuinely arising from um, non-political crimes from act contrary to the purposes and principles of the United Nations so the next one is the article 15 the right to a nationality and freedom to change it so everyone has the right to be converted for example if you were a Filipino and you wanted to be um, converted into an American so you have that right as long as you did not um, as long as you have not violated any of the law or you have just um, obey the conditions or some of um, the conditions under the law so no one shall be arbitrarily deprived of his nationality nor denied the right to change his nationality so the next article which is the article 16 the right to marriage and family so everyone has the right to um to enter in the marriage and to have a family as long as you are 18 years old above you can now enter marriage and to have a family so this right um without any limitation due to race nationality or religion everyone has the right for marriage and family we have um essentials and um formal uh requisites of marriage included in the family code and you have to follow in order to enjoy all of the rights in choosing your husband and wife it should be free and full of consent between both of the spouses so without forcing the other because it is a lifetime commitment and the family is considered as the fundamental group unit of society and is entitled for um, protection by society and the state so the next one is the article 17 right to own property so we have this all everyone has the equal um right to own a property as well as the right to co-ownership with two or more person that is allowed by the law and the next one is the article 18 which is freedom of belief and religion so everyone has the freedom of choosing their own religion their own beliefs and their uh, their guiding principle in life so the next one is the article 19 freedom of opinion and information so we are all entitled everyone is entitled uh, with their own um, expression their they're free to express themselves, their, their opinion, and their information. So this right is, uh, includes interference and to seek and receive an important information and ideas through any media and regardless of frontiers. So the next article, so article 20, right of peaceful assembly and association. So, um everyone has the right to become part of any gatherings it could be a demonstration or rally um, we are um, entitled we are free to do things but we should not forget to obey the conditions or what are the uh, what are the laws or the regulations that we need to follow in a peaceful way not in a destructive way so um without disregarding the law also um everyone has the right yes to be part of any gatherings in um in the public but we should not force the other person to join us and the next article is the article 21 right to participate in government and in free elections so everyone has the right to take part in any undertakings in the government it is his right 
to participate in any activity. So everyone has the right to equal access to public service in his country. But there are also qualifications to be part of public service uh, in which um, the will of the people should be the basis of the authority. So the next one and the next um, article the article 22 so right to social security okay um everyone has the right to um have this um equality or this security uh, social in the sense of um economic social and cultural that is highly needed by a person in order to preserve his or her um dignity so the next one is the article 23 right to desirable work and to join and to join trade unions so everyone has the right to work and the free choice of employment just um favorable conditions of work and to protect against unemployment that is why we have department of labor and employment or known as dole that protects the rights of the employers but also we need to take note that there are qualifications that need to be um, that need to be practiced or possessed of an employee in order to be part of that um, program so the next one is the article 24 the right to rest and leisure so including this reasonable limitations of working hours and periodic holidays with pay so you should not let the workers work overtime especially those who have mental and health conditions so the next article is the article 25 right to adequate living standard yes so everyone has the right to adequate for the health and the well-being of himself and his family including the food clothing housing and medical care and necessary social services the right to security in sickness and employment disability old age widowhood or other lack of livelihood in circumstances beyond his control and the next the next part is the article 26 which is the right to education so everyone has the right to access education a quality education for all uh, regardless of um, race ethnicity gender age um, and among others even if the person with the disability you have this right to access to education and the next article is the article 27 right to participate in the cultural life of community okay of course um, Everyone has the right to enjoy the arts and to share in scientific advancement and its benefits. And the next is the Article 28, Right to Social Order, that articulates this document. So, um, everyone has the right for social order, in which the rights and the freedom set forth in this declaration can be fully recognized. And the next article is the article 29 community duties to essential to free and full development so everyone has duties to the community in which um allow allow the free and full development of his personality as possible so these rights and freedoms um may in no case be exercised contrary to the purposes and principles of the united nations so the last article which freedom from state or personal interference with um, in the above rights nothing in this declaration of the of uh, the human rights may be interpreted as the implying for any state person or any group right to the engage in any activity or to perform any act aimed of the destruction of rights and freedoms set forth herein so you are not allowed to abuse any of the rights that were given to you so all of the rights under this de uh, declaration of um, the universal Decor declaration of human rights um, 
all of the rights and freedoms has its own limitations and obligations so here okay so out of the universal declaration of human rights in the different articles that i've discussed earlier so we can conclude that there are five major types of human rights that people uh, need to be valued or that need to be understood we have here the civil rights the political rights the social rights economic rights and the cultural rights and that would be my part thank you so much and god bless God bless everyone, this is Sweet Darling Cabrera from BSS Major in English 2 and I will be discussing the Convention on, on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women or SIDA. SIDA is an, is an international legal instrument that requires countries to eliminate discrimination against women and girls in all areas and promotes women's and girls' equal rights. Also, the K international agreements that guides the work of UN women in achieving gender equality and empowering all women and girls. SIDA was adopted by the UN General Assembly on December 19, 1979, coming into force as a treaty on December 3, 1981. Today, it is one of the most broadly endorsed human rights treaties. It has been ratified or acceded to by 187 countries to date, or about 90% of the UN membership. The articles of SIDA fall into three main groups. The first set of, of articles explain the nature and scope of the state's obligation. And the second set of articles targets specific forms of discrimination and outlines measures that the state must undertake to eliminate discrimination in each of these areas. And the last set of articles governs procedural and administrative matters such as the way the SIDA reporting process works. SIDA defines what constitutes discrimination against women and girls and set up an agenda for national action including the 30 articles to end such discrimination. SIDA is really important to learn most especially to the youth because it comprehensively addresses women's, hum women's human rights and it is focused on ending all forms of discrimination against women and girls and guaranteeing their um, rights in all areas of life as well as it provides a complete definition of sex-based discrimination described as any distinction, in exclusion, or restriction on the basis of sex, which intentionally or unintentionally nullifies or impairs the recognition, enjoyment, and exercise of women's social, cultural, political, and economic rights. Young women and young men are the eyes and ears for monitoring whether women's and girls' rights are being respected or if they are being violated. Youth can contribute to gender equality by learning about women's and girls' rights. So this resort, resource explains why SIDA is important to youth, describes SIDA's impact in advancing gender equality and human rights for women and girls around the world, and summarizes the articles of SIDA, including the specific forms of discrimination that must be end ended and how SIDA is implemented and monitored to ensure the effective protection of women against discrimination. That's all. Thank you. Good day and God bless ma'am. I am Angelia Argilio Polina and my topic for today is Convention of Rights of a Child. Before we can continue to my main topic, we should tackle first how important child is. So, children are ones are very vital for deciding how the world is gonna be after some years. And if one can do some good in life of a child, then there can be a change, at least a slightest change in a world to come. And most of them think on, 
same lines, then we can hope a better future ahead. So, let's proceed to the next topic. There are four categories in the 54 articles of CRC describes as survival rights, development rights, protection rights, and participation rights. So, let's go on first to the survival rights. Survival rights is a cover child's right to life and needs that are most basic to existence. So upon birth, every child should enjoy the basic right to the health and nutrition. So in short, we are obligated to give them the proper nourishment and needs. So the second one is development rights. It includes what children require to reach their fullest potential. So Children should have freedom of thought, conscience, and religion, access to appropriate information, and right to educate, leisure, recreation, and cultural activities. So the third one is protection rights. It recognizes the vulnerability of children by preserving their identity, nationality, as well as providing safeguards against abuse, neglect, child labor, drug abuse, sexual exploitation, sale and trafficking, torture, and deprivation of liberty and armed con conflict. In short, we need to protect children from harmful and dangerous things. So, the fourth and last one is participation rights. It allows children to take an active role in their communities and nations. So, in short, children are allowed to participate in any activities based on their age and capabilities and never underestimate them on their capabilities unless they say so. So, now let's talk about rights and responsibilities. So, let's say every one of us have right and responsibilities in, in different aspects of lives. Our rights should be respected also in where they can see our beliefs. We should always know that the corresponding consequences of our acts that is not right. We should avoid discrimination and harassments to one another. Likewise, we need to treat our colleagues and with all respects all the time so keep safe everyone and that's all for my topic for today's video and god bless everyone